I am going to preach a message tonight that has angered many, many, many churchmen. It has angered many of the older people. It has angered many of the youth. Many of the youth that I've preached this to have become fiercely angry. But the people that have become most angry at hearing this message have been the parents of youth. I have found that there is something quite amazing among parents. That if they can get some sort of a claim out of their children, that, that they profess faith in Jesus Christ, that they seem to hold on to that, and it gives them assurance and joy. And it seems that they're bothered any time someone would come and uh, question that claim. It seems we would rather hold on to a false hope than to hear the truth. There are many people who do not want to hear the truth because it will shake up the false hope they have that they're going to heaven when indeed they are not. There are so many people in Christianity, American Christianity, that believe themselves right with God, that believe themselves saved because they were told that by a preacher who should have spent more time studying the Bible and less time preaching. I hear people all over the world, and especially in this country, tell me that they're saved. And I ask them, how do they know that they're saved? Well, because they believe. And no one asks them the second question. How do you know that you believe? If we were to dismiss this congregation tonight and send everyone out to every part of this city, we would find out that the great majority of the people in this city believe that they believe. And we know that's not true. If we were to go to taverns and crack houses tonight, if we were to go to casinos anywhere in this world, we would find people who believe that they believe. And the question is, how can we be sure that we believe when so many people say they believe and we know they don't? In America, we have combined two doctrines and we have lost both of them. There are two very important doctrines in the Christian faith. The first one is commonly called, a name I do not like, but I will use here tonight, the security of the believer. That every person who has truly believed in Jesus Christ is born again and they are secure. The very God who saved them will keep them saved. Security of the believer. But there's another doctrine of which we do not hear much about. It's not just the doctrine of security, but the doctrine of assurance. It is true that every true believer is kept by the power of God. That's the doctrine of security. But the doctrine of assurance is this. How can you be assured that you're a true believer? How can you know that you are a true believer? I've had people tell me, well, I just know that I know. I tell them there's a way that seems right unto men. It leads to death. I've heard people tell me, well, I know in my heart of hearts that I am saved. The Bible says that the heart is deceitfully wicked. It goes beyond knowledge in its wickedness. So do you really want to trust a mind that is faulty? Do you really want to trust a heart that can be wicked? I've even heard people tell me, well, I know I'm saved because the preacher told me I'm saved. And since when did men have such authority? And then, the worst of all, I know I'm saved because I have walked with God. My dear friend, let me tell you this. If you are not walking with God now, you can have no assurance that you have ever been saved. We are not teaching here tonight that if you walk with God and you're saved and then you stop walking with God, that you lose your salvation. What we're telling you is this. We have assurance that we have come to know Him, not just because one time we repented, but we are continuing to repent today. And it is not just that at one time we believed, but that we are continuing to believe today. And it is not just that one time we walked with Him, we continue to walk with Him today because He who began a good work will finish it.
It says in chapter 13, verse 5, Paul had come to a church, many of them professing Christ, many of them walking in carnality. And he doesn't ask them, he doesn't say to them, let me ask you something, when was the time that you first asked Jesus Christ into your heart? He didn't even refer to their conversion experience. He goes right to present tense and he says this, test yourselves in verse 5 to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test? If I see someone who, who, let's say, for three or four years seems to have walked with God, loved the saints, endeavored to pray, to know the Word, to congregate with other believers and all the such, and then they begin to fall away gradually, they begin to walk away. They begin to allow the world and sin and other things into their life. They begin to enjoy the fellowship of the wicked. I don't go to them and tell them, you know you're a Christian and you need to avoid backsliding. I go to them and say, you have made the good profession. You have declared among many that you are a believer, but now you are beginning to live like an unbeliever. It is very, very possible you never knew him that up until this point, it has all been a very deceiving work of the flesh. Because if a work of God does not continue, it never was a work of God. Now, what does Paul say to this person? He says, test yourselves. Test yourself. Take a test. Let me tell you something, my dear friend. Heaven and hell, eternity and death, may not be very much a reality to you, but it most certainly is to this preacher. I could care less whether or not your bank account is balanced or you have self-esteem. My only thing, the only thing that might keep me up this evening and steal sleep from my eyes is the fact that many of you will die and go to hell. Test yourself. This is not just some whimsical thing. This is not just something to worry about for a day. We're talking about eternity. Is it well with your soul? If you test yourselves in the light of Scripture, will you be found whole and complete, born again, kept by the power of God? It's time to take a test and stop relying on your emotions and stop relying on what everyone is telling you and stop comparing yourself to other people who call themselves Christians because the great majority of people in America who call themselves Christians are lost. Some leaders in the Southern Baptist Convention have said this, if we take seriously what the Bible says about Christianity, we would have to say that less than 10 to 15 percent of all our membership is even saved. And don't think that just applies to Southern Baptists. It applies to you all. He says, test yourself. Examine yourself. Not just some light examination. Not just hear the words of these, uh, this preacher and walk out there and allow Satan to steal the word of God from your heart. While you're here and while Christ is present and while the word is preached, examine yourself. It is a deadly thing. Sin waits outside this door. It is crouching and its desire is to have you. While you are here and Christ is present, examine yourself. So many times in South America, working in the Andes Mountains, I would have to cross footbridges. Gorges that you almost couldn't see to the bottom. Test the ropes. Test the wood. Is this a sound bridge? Examine it carefully. Why? You get out in the middle of that thing, it breaks, you're dead. In the same way, that salvation that you hold on to, that you trust in, it might be like a horse's hair. When you swing out into eternity, many of you are going to swing out on nothing stronger than a horse's hair. And when the fires of hell blast up, you'll wither and you'll fall. Examine yourself. Take the Word of God and what the Word of God says about a true Christian and examine yourself in light of it. And if you fall short of the test, repent and believe. Throw yourself upon the mercy of God. Cry out to Him until a work is done. And that's another thing, isn't it? A whole other sermon. 
until a work is done. This silly Christianity in America. Repeat these words after me. No, you might have to wait upon God. You might have to cry out to Him until a work is done. A true work, a finished work, a complete work. How can we take a test? How can we test our lives? How can you test yourself tonight to see whether or not you truly are a Christian? Well, we just have to go to the Word of God to do that. Go to 1 John chapter 5. 